In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So, everybody has cravings from time to time, all right? Everybody has a craving for something, and what I want you all to think about is to reflect on a time when you had a craving. It can be for anything, okay? But when you had a craving, to what lengths did you go to to satisfy this craving? To what lengths did you go to to satisfy this craving? All right? Tell me, like, what was your mindset? All right? Be a bit interactive here at the beginning, but, like, what is your mindset when you have a craving that you needed to satisfy? No sacrifice is too great. What? No sacrifice is too great. There's determination behind it. Wanted. Hmm? Wanted. There's a there's a strong like want for it. Consumes your mind. Sorry? It consumes your mind. It consumes your mind. Right? It consumes your mind. It's really hard to think about anything else. What else can a craving do to you? Addictive. It can become addictive. Okay. Anything else? What about with respect to like other people who are trying to communicate to you in the midst of your craving? How well are you listening? <laughs> okay, good question. Do we listen at baseline, let alone do we listen during a craving, right? Which is questionable. Right? But I think you understand what I'm saying. Like, when we have a craving, when we have an appetite for something, there are certain characteristics that come into play. Right? And we're just talking about food, but in all honesty, like, we have appetites in life for much more than just food. We have a variety of appetites in life. We have appetites for success. We have appetites for finances. We have appetites for relationships. We have appetites to not feel certain ways. Okay, we have an appetite not to feel lonely. So we have a variety of appetites. We have a variety of cravings in life. This is a natural part of our human existence, of our makeup, that we have these desires and their appetites and they can very easily become cravings. And it's dangerous when there's a craving because we can become so focused on the craving, on the appetite, that reason gets thrown to the wind, right? That we're unable to hear what other people are saying. But we have to learn how to deal with our appetite. We have to learn how to deal with the various cravings that we have in life. We also have sexual appetites, right? It is a natural part of our being. It's a natural part of our makeup. And if we're not careful, it can consume us because it become a craving. But frequently, when we pursue our cravings, when we pursue our appetites, and we finally get it, all right, and we get it through unhealthy means, how satisfying and fulfilling are those appetites? When we finally go and do whatever is needed to get what we want, okay, throwing caution to the wind, and we finally get it, how satisfying or fulfilling is it? I think most, more often than not, more often than not, my battery goes dead during sermons. Yeah, any new batteries? Uh, no, there's a bag there. Take it off. Okay. I'll give it to you. Take this. That's it. There we go. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? No? Can you hear me now? Better? Okay. I'm craving a good mic. All right. But more often than not, when we pursue our appetites through unhealthy means or through unhealthy ways, it is unsatisfying and it leaves us open and wanting more and more. 
right? And so I want us to think about, well, how do All right. What I want us to look at with today's scripture, which is a story that many of us are very familiar with of the feeding of 5,000, is we want to pick out certain elements and challenge ourselves to think with respect to these elements and how we pursue our appetites and how we pursue our cravings. Because when we look at today, the people had a craving. The people had a hunger. And they went to great lengths to try and feed this hunger. But the truth was that they went to great lengths and even though like at the end, like what would we know later on, like past this story, is that they continued to search after him, right? Because all they wanted to do was just eat, right? Their, their appetite was never fulfilled. Their appetite was never fulfilled. But if we look at the same story, we could pick up certain elements that kind of tell us, well, how do I pursue and satisfy my appetites in a healthy way, in a godly way, right? And so when we first look at this story, we see that there's a gap. There's a gap, all right? There's what the people want, which is to be filled, and there is their resources. What were their resources? There are a multitude of people, and what, the, what was their total resources? Five loaves and two fish, right? There was, a, there was a gap to what they had and what they wanted, right? But isn't that the point, isn't that an appetite? Right? There's what we have and what we want. And there's a huge gap frequently between them. All right? And we'll do anything to try and get what we want using the very little that we have. And we'll stretch it in, in various ways that are very unhealthy. Right? But at the very base of this story, there's what they want and what they have. But the first thing that they did that was right was they looked at the reality of what they had, okay, after being challenged by Jesus, okay, they looked at the reality of what they had, and what did they do with that reality? They brought the reality to God. Right? They brought the reality of their circumstances to God. They said, look, you said feed everybody, we don't know how to do it. This is what we have. What do we do? What do we do? They were honest with the situation. They couldn't fathom, they couldn't figure it out, they couldn't fix it, but they were honest with the situation which is frequently what many of us need to do with our own appetites, with our own cravings, is we need to take our cravings, our appetites for various things in life and bring them to God and say, look, this is what I have, this is what I want, okay? And I need you to fill in the gap according to your will, right? But there's a reality check to it that many of us don't go through. We don't frequently come to God and say, God, I am so, so lonely. God, I am like hungering for finances. God, like I'm being consumed with jealousy. Like a lot of times we don't come to God with the reality of our situations, all right? We just live in a fictitious world, thinking or acting as if we can get everything. But we need to come to God with the reality. And then Jesus teaches us the next part. When we come to God with the reality of our lives, which is a deficiency at its bare minimum, Okay, because remember, there's the want, the, what, our, what we're hoping for, and the reality of what we have, there's a deficiency, there's a gap there. When we come to it, the Lord teaches us first to be thankful. Maybe thankful for little, but to approach God with a spirit of thanksgiving. Right? Because that spirit of thanksgiving allows us to temper and control like where our minds are going. Right? allows us to say, look, look, it's not that I have nothing because our minds can be very dramatic in certain situations, all right? Teaching us to be thankful is really important when approaching God. So we'd be thankful for the things that we have. But then he also tells us, you know, where he lifts his voice up, he gives thanks to God, and he asks God to bring down a blessing, right? According to his will, according to his provisions. And when we allow God to answer our appetites according to His will, right? 
frequently we're surprised on how he answers. And while the people in this story were surprised because there is abundance of food, in all honesty, sometimes we're, we're surprised in how he answers because he isn't giving us exactly what we want. All right? But he does so for our own good. He does so because he sees the condition of our heart, he sees the condition of our desires, and he will give appropriately. But when in those times when we feel like he's not giving us what we are asking for, what we feel that we want, what we think that we want, what, our craving, what we think our cravings, how our cravings will be satisfied when he doesn't give it to us, but yet we remain thankful and patient for his blessings, for him to answer accordingly, what happens is he answers in a way that we cannot anticipate and in a way that we cannot see. And how do we know when God has answered? Because at the end of this story, there's an abundance. There's an abundance that the people, had they tried their very best, would have never have seen. Okay, there's an abundance that had they gone about this their own way, they never would have seen the abundance of 12 extra baskets of food had they tried to solve this their own way. I mean, can you imagine if they tried to solve this their own way, pulled all their money together, went to the local town, bought food, and gave it? At best, they maybe would have fed 50 to 100 people. Right? At best. And then we said, that's it. But there's an abundance in the way that God answers. And when we look and reflect on our life's appetites, right? Many of us can struggle with an appetite of companionship and wanting to be with somebody because we don't like that feeling of loneliness. And for those who have waited and those who have prayed patiently, God has awarded a, a, you know, to them a companion. And they see that companion and they receive so much more than they would have imagined. For those who have an appetite for finances and the Lord may not give, and satisfied. To, them, to some people, he has given many of finances, but to others, and to probably the majority, he has given sufficiency. But when they learn to be thankful, when they learn to take things from God's hand, and when they learn to not like pursue this because it's a dangerous thing, what they find is greater fulfillment in life. So there's so many ways that God answers our various appetites and our, our various cravings, right? In a way that actually brings a deeper and more lasting fulfillment than if we were to take our appetites and cravings into our own hands. And so reflect on yourself and reflect on the way that you pursue your cravings, whatever they may be, whatever your appetite may be. And you ask yourself, if every time I pursue this craving and I pursue this appetite, how I want to do it, but yet I still come up and that craving is existing, and the appetite is still growing, and my ways of pursuing it are becoming unhealthier, then there's a lot to reflect on. There's a lot that you need to you know, pull back on and begin to say, wait a second, like what am I doing to myself? How do I, how do I take a step back from this and begin to come to God in the reality of what is? the reality of my appetite, the reality of my craving, the reality of all the negative behaviors I have you know, heaped upon myself because I pursued it in my own way. Have a reality check. Come with thanksgiving and wait for God to give the blessing and, and trust in His promise that He will give a fulfillment that none of us could ever receive by pursuing it ourselves. The Lord said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have life abundantly. He is the only one. He is the only source that will fulfill us in a way that nothing on this earth, none of our efforts can ever do. But can we go through those steps? Come to Him with the reality of our situation, with thanksgiving, and wait for Him to give the blessing in order to receive the fullness that He has promised, and He has promised it abundantly. So we'll take a minute to think about that 
to meditate on one of your own appetites. And glory be to God forever. Amen.